Hello everybody, my name is Lars Vemje for MamaWorld.com and today we're going to talk about Mocha Import Plus for Nuke version 1.1. I'm going to show you how to transform this lady into a younger woman. The tools we're going to use are Mocha Pro, Mocha Import Plus for Nuke, Nuke and Photoshop CC. But before we get started, I'd like to thank Pond5 for providing us with the footage for this tutorial. And now, without further ado, let's get right to it. Here's a summary of the five things that I had to do to transform this lady into a younger woman. And right after that, I'll give you an in-depth view of these five steps so that you can take these workflows and apply them to your own projects. Okay, the first thing that I had to do was plane out tracking the areas in Mocha Pro that I wanted to retouch. Number two is about generating plates with that tracking data and the help of Mocha Import Plus's stabilized view function in Nuke. Number three is about turning these plates into clean plates in Photoshop CC. Number four is about merging these clean plates into the shot in Nuke. And step number five is about changing the shape of this lady's face with Mocha Import Plus's new Spline Warp Plus function. All right, now I'm going to give you an in-depth view of these workflows. Here we are in Mocha Pro version 4. So let's start with the first step in this retouch workflow, which is about plane out tracking the areas in Mocha Pro that we want to retouch. The whole tracking process needs to be done because Mocha Import Plus can take that tracking data, invert it, and give you a stabilized view of your tracked and defined area. That way, in many cases, you only have to retouch a single frame, and Mocha Import Plus makes that retouch fit into the scene. In this shot, I tracked three areas, her face, her neck, and this area of her shoulder. Now, plane out tracking in Mocha Pro is as easy as selecting the X-Spline Layer tool, drawing a shape, and for the sake of this example, I'll try to match the shape layer that I have already tracked for her face. If there is a perspective change in the region you want to track, it's good to have perspective turned on under the motion tab. And then you just have to click on track forward. But as you can see, I've already prepared these tracks. That's why I'll be working with them instead of creating new ones. A very important thing to keep in mind is that you have to define your planar surface area if you want to use that tracking data for a stabilized view. This planar surface area will define the boundaries of your stabilized view in Nuke. It should cover the area you want to retouch and roughly have the aspect ratio of your footage because otherwise it will look distorted in the stabilized view. In this case, our aspect ratio is 16 by 9. There are two ways to get your Mocha tracking data into the Mocha Import Plus nodes. The first one is to export it as a Nuke script from Mocha that you can load into a Mocha Import Plus node. The second one is to just copy the tracking data of your selected layer to the clipboard and paste it into a Mocha Import Plus node. Now we'll head over to Nuke. This is the second step of our retouch workflow, which is about generating plates with our tracking data and the help of Mocha Import Plus's stabilized view plus function. Okay, here we are in Nuke. Working with Mocha Import Plus is super easy. This is the Mama World logo icon. When we click on it, we can see Mocha Import Plus and Workflow. Workflow is a free plugin that comes fully functional and without time limitation, even if you just get a trial version of Mocha Import Plus version 1.1 for Nuke. As of now, its only function is relative file path. When you apply a relative file path to your script, you can take the folder that contains all the files of your Nuke project and move it anywhere else without breaking your footage links. And that can be very helpful. Now let's take a look at Mocha Import Plus. In this tutorial, we're only going to take a look at the Stabilized View Plus and the Spline Warp Plus node. If you want to learn more about the other features of Mocha Import Plus, you can go to its settings and click on Watch In-Depth Tutorial. All right, now I'm going to show you how to set up a stabilized view in Nuke. So let's make sure that our footage is selected. Click on the Stabilize View Plus button. Double click on our Start Stabilize node. 
and load in our tracking data from the clipboard. You can also load the tracking data from a file. OK, now when we take a look at the first dot node of our stabilized view and press play, we can see that this lady's face is stabilized. That makes it very easy for us to retouch her face. And since we want to retouch one frame out of the stabilized view in Photoshop, we have to export it with a right node from this setup. I have already prepared three stabilized view setups for these three areas that need to be retouched. Her neck, her shoulder, and her face. What I did was render out one frame out of every stabilized view so that I could retouch these plates and turn them into clean plates in Photoshop CC. And then I merged them back into these setups. So now I'll render these plates by hitting the F5 key, which is the hotkey for rendering all, change the frame range to 1, and click on OK. All right, now let's continue with the third step of our retouch workflow, which is about learning how to retouch a plate and turn it into a clean plate in Photoshop CC. So here we are in Photoshop CC. I'm only going to show you this workflow with one of these three plates, but that will be more than enough to give you an idea of this workflow. The two tools that I use to retouch this lady's skin are the clone stamp tool and the healing brush. The healing brush works almost like the clone stamp tool, which means that you also sample pixels from one area and paint them over another part of your image, as you would with the clone stamp tool. The only difference is that the healing brush tries to maintain the color values of the area you are modifying to a certain point. But since that brush cannot completely replace the clone stamp tool because of its color awareness feature, I like to work with the healing brush and the clone stamp tool to get the result that I'm looking for. OK, now because I already did this, I can show you the final retouched image. Of course, there are many other ways to do this kind of work, but I like to do it this way when it comes to retouching images. Now let's continue with step number four of our retouch workflow, which is about merging our clean plates into the shot in Nuke. And since this workflow is pretty easy, I'll show you how to merge one of the clean plates into the shot. OK, here we are in Nuke again. I've already imported the clean plate of the lady's face into the corresponding stabilized view setup and created a roto shape for her face. Merging the image of her retouched face into the shot will just take a few steps. I'll just have to create a merge node by hitting the letter M, connecting its output to our end stabilized node, its A input to our clean plate, its B input to our roto node, and now if we take a look at the last merge node of this node tree and turn on premult alpha in our end stabilized node, we can see that this weird line around her face disappears. Now, when I press play, you can see that our clean plate sticks to the lady's face. Of course, you can take this workflow and apply it to many other shot scenarios. Alright, here comes the last step for this workflow, which is about Mocha Import Plus's Spline Warp Plus node. So let's create one, load in our face tracking data from a file this time which is the file face.nk, and connect this node to our node tree. The Spline Warp Plus node can help you with deforming an image along a spline. And here's how it works. Let's say we want to make this lady's face a bit thinner. For that, I just have to draw a spline around her face. Like this. Then I have to select the whole spline, right click on it, choose duplicate and join, and just scale it a bit down. To limit the influence of the deformation, we can draw another spline around her face, put the spline in the bottom of the spline hierarchy, and click under this little icon where the last spline is. This will help to minimize the spline warp's influence for the rest of the image quite a bit. Now, when I scrub through the timeline, you can see that these splines are driven by Mocha's tracking data. Alright, that's it. 
Mission accomplished. And since I've also prepared a final comp, we can take a look at that. Okay, I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it and that you can already think of ways to use Mocha Import Plus for Nuke in your own workflow. I have one last information about our new release, which is that all of the nodes that are created with Mocha Import Plus version 1.1 can also be open in Nuke 7 or 8, even if you don't have the plugin installed, which is pretty important because that allows you to easily collaborate with others that don't have Mocha Import Plus installed. Okay, that's it for me. Again, my name is Lars Vemje from MamaWorld.com and goodbye everybody.